Having been on air for 25 years with over 25 seasons and 493 episode segments, Arthur was the longest running animated US show right behind The Simpsons. But that was until 2022 when we got its final ever episode. So two years later, and after a lot of grieving on my part, I wanted to run through exactly what happened to Arthur, Binky, DW, Muffy, and everyone else in Elwood City in the future. Keep watching to find out. Also, I just want to say I have been so excited for this video, so I was super quick to get my own Arthur avatar made just for it. And if you'd like your own Arthur OC, simply comment down below what your favourite animal is, and I'll pick someone at random. I'll then ask my friend Matt Thornton, aka the amazing artist who draws all of my channel art, to draw yours to your likeness. Be quick though, because this competition ends in just two weeks, and do make sure you have your notification bell for when I reply to you. Okay, so it only really makes sense that we start by chatting about the main aardvark himself, Arthur Reed. First of all, hands up, who else thought that Arthur was a bear growing up, and was a bit shocked to find out that he is in fact an aardvark? Like, where's his long nose? But you might be surprised to learn that he didn't always look like this. You see, in Mark Brown's first book of Arthur called Arthur's Nose, he looked much more like an aardvark. And even though the moral of the story was about accepting who you are, big nose and all, Arthur's only got smaller and eventually got removed completely. I also unearthed this clip of Mark Brown himself explaining exactly why Arthur's nose got smaller. Why did his nose get smaller and smaller? And it wasn't anything I was consciously doing. I just drew him and the more I got to know him, you know, I liked him. He just started to look more human. So even though the show took place around the same time frame, if not slightly more than one school year, it did still manage to tease some possible futures for us. Like in season four, episode four, which cuts five years into the future when Arthur's 13. But we got something a bit more interesting in another flash forward, which showed Arthur as 18 years old. He's the CEO of his own catering business, is so rich he owns a limousine and is married to Francine and they even have a son. Although this all turns out to be a dream, so it's hardly canon, but funnily enough, in another flash forward scene in season three, set in the very, very far future, Arthur and Francine are together once again as an elderly couple. It is unclear if this vision of the future is actually real, but there is obviously a pattern being developed here, at least in the series earlier seasons. But we'll come back to that a bit later. We then meet an 86 year old Arthur in the special Arthur's First Day. Here Arthur goes through a portal and talks to his older self, and unfortunately we don't really learn too much about him, and it actually turns out to be a dream, but even so I thought to include it anyway because I am including everything here. So while there were definitely glimpses of Arthur's adult life across the entire series, the 2022 finale, All Grown Up, definitely provided the most and only concrete answers. Now as a young adult, Arthur sports a messy mop of dark brown hair and has scraggly facial hair and somehow the same pair of glasses he's worn since elementary school. But the biggest reveal is his job, a graphic novelist, and his first published work is the show we have been watching for 25 years and growing up with. Chapter one, how I got my very first pair of glasses. Thus making the show have its full circle moment. Honestly, it was such a perfect ending for Arthur. He has always been such a massive reader and loved comics, so to make him a writer and a graphic artist was the perfect choice by the creators. So a great behind the scenes detail in the final episode that I loved was that the original actor, Michael Yarmish, who played Arthur up until season five, returned to voice him here. Anyway, as for the far, far future, as seen in the opening of a season three episode, we see Arthur's granddaughter who looks exactly like his mum as well as his great grandkids, R4 and 3W. And maybe Francine is their great grandmother. I don't know, what do you guys think? Buster Baxter. Although Buster was always inquisitive, albeit mostly about aliens, he's someone who had often struggled in school. For example, he wasn't great in tests and at one point almost had to repeat the third grade. So it might surprise you to learn that this bunny will become a college teacher and would even teach Arthur's little sister, Kate. Which is a nice future, but if I had to come up with something alternative for him, I'd probably say a food critic or a chef simply because he's constantly eating. Or you know, maybe a paleontologist because he loved dinosaurs. But above all these, I always imagine that Buster would have one of those YouTube conspiracy channels that focuses on proving aliens and other supernatural creatures exist. Now that would be fun. 
Aside from this though, we have seen other glimpses of Buster's future, like becoming president of the United States, but this was just in Arthur's imagination, so most likely would never happen. But I can totally see him becoming president just to find out if the government are really hiding UFOs. Also in a season 10 episode, we get another flash forward where Buster is telling a story to his grandchildren. Which is nice. Binky Barnes. In the final episode of Arthur, Binky is shown being a local news reporter, which to me seemed a bit random. It felt like it didn't really suit him at all. A running theme in Arthur was despite him being tough or being a bully stereotype, he was always a very gentle giant. He was scared of the dark, liked butterflies and was a talented musician. So couldn't they have made him a jazz musician instead? Or the fact that he loved nature, especially butterflies, maybe he could have studied bugs for a living. But after some research, I found out that reporting is actually the perfect job for him. Because in the season 25 episode, Binky wrestles with a story, he spends the day with Buster's mum, who is the editor-in-chief of Elwood's newspaper. And is here where he discovers he loves journalism. So I take it back, being a news reporter is a fantastic job for him, and a perfect ending. But yeah, I always loved Binky. Alan Powers, aka The Brain. For reasons unknown, Brain was actually left out of the final episode, but even so, we have seen glimpses of a possible future for him in a season three episode. In it, The Brain is a famous professor who invents teleportation, and he even has his own television channel. Also, in another episode, we see that he becomes Chief Justice. So yeah, super, super successful life. But come on, what do you expect from someone nicknamed The Brain? D.W. Reed. Arthur's annoying little sister was always bossy, controlling, and a bit of a snitch. Therefore, it makes perfect sense that she'll become a police officer. Like, when I watched this, I instantly thought of the episode where her beloved Snowball disappeared, she accused Arthur, and even tried to force a confession out of him. I want a confession! Confess! Side note here, but also while watching this, I found it hilarious that DW literally hasn't changed her hairstyle since she was four years old. And speaking of hair, let's now move on to Francine Frensky. In the final episode, we saw Francine had swapped her bob, unlike DW, for a slick new shaved, undercutty, quiffy, pompadour hairstyle. And personally, I like this look for her because it really honed in on the fact that she was always a bit of a tomboy in the group. And she just didn't seem to vibe with the stereotypical girly stuff. So seeing her with this more androgynous look totally suited her character. We learn that she's now the CEO of her own sneaker company, and just like DW, this seems like the perfect job for her. Francine has always been the sporty one of the group, and kind of just the cooler one. So circling back to what I mentioned earlier with her being shown to be in a relationship with Arthur in the future, I do realise that some fans reject this because they always saw Francine as gay. The author of Arthur, Mark Brown, was asked this directly while guest teaching at the University of Wisconsin, saying that, you know, I thought about it. Well, she could be, of course she could be, and so they kind of liked the idea that Francine could be gay. George Lundgren. So, in this final episode, we find out that George will end up taking over the sugar bowl, which is the dessert parlour they all used to hang out at as children. And it seems like they still do. And at first I must admit that I did think this was a bit random, because the thing I remember most about George was that he was very shy and quiet often using his puppet giraffe Wally as an outlet for this shyness. Who, I must admit, did really freak me out as a kid. Not George, this freaking puppet. As we moved on though, later episodes did show George come out of his show a bit more and be a bit more sociable. So maybe he took over the sugar bowl to talk to more people and because he has a lot of happy memories there. But now I'm thinking about it, maybe Buster would have been a bit more suited to owning the sugar bowl. Hmm. Now let's go on to Muffy Crosswire. In the finale, Muffy is shown running as Elwood City's mayor, and it totally makes sense that she would run for public office because in a season 5 episode, The Election, Muffy runs for class president. And in that same episode, in a flash future, Muffy will then go on to be president of the United States. Muffy comes from money, with her dad owning Crosswire Motors, so she definitely has the bank for a political campaign. But after serving her terms, Muffy would then leave politics to start a family and become head coach of her daughter's soccer team. So yeah, Muffy definitely has a fantastic future ahead of her. Nigel Ratburn 
When Arthur and his classmates first met their third grade teacher, they hated him. They thought he was mean, vindictive and cruel, but they soon came to realise that he's not actually a bad guy. In fact, they found out he was awesome and super passionate about teaching. Plus, if you haven't watched the show in a long time, then you might learn that Mr. Ratburn is gay and got married to his partner, Patrick, in season 22 in a huge landmark episode. And of course, some conservative groups and parents got up in arms about this episode, with the state of Alabama even banning it from airing. And although Ratburn wasn't in the final episode, we do see a glimpse of his future in the special DW and the Beastly Birthday. Set four years into the future, and Ratburn has a white goatee, glasses, and wears a black suit with a green turtleneck sweater. And he looks very, very dashing. But as for the other residents of Elwood City, unfortunately we don't really know what happened to them so I can't really comment on anyone else. By the way, YouTube recently has been marking many videos that discuss cartoons as being made for kids. And because being made for kids basically is a death sentence for a video, I'm gonna say a profanity right here so they can't do that now. Fuck. So now that's out of the way, thank you so much for watching.